Back in the early to mid-2000s, the now flashy and heavily fictional Call of Duty series was surprisingly humble by comparison. It was a franchise that took real-world history and applied a dash of Hollywood influences to bring warfare to life in ways very few games had the budget and talent to at the time. It wasn't until 2008's World at War when things changed. Amongst the metal and steel of the Second World War's most recognizable firearms, a single gun managed to rise above the others, and through its striking presence in this World War II game, became one of the most iconic weapons in all of gaming. Today, make sure to reload before picking up that max ammo, because we're going to be looking at the evolution of Call of Duty's ray gun. In the comments, I encourage you all to let me know your favorite version of the ray gun, and for what reason. I'm going to be monitoring the comments, and in a few days, I'll pin a comment saying which ray gun is the most popular. Also, liking and sharing the video is appreciated. Alright, let's get started. The creation of the Nazi Zombies Horde mode for Call of Duty World at War was incredibly stressful. Management and Treyarch studio heads were absolutely against the mode, and thus much of its creation had to be done in secret by various employees as a skunk works project to avoid the ire of higher-ups. In spite of who they were working against, Jesse Snyder and his friends put together a genre-defining mode that proved the leadership definitively wrong. This is a thing that people wanted, and it elevated Treyarch to new heights. It was during the development of the Nazi Zombies mode that one of Treyarch's modelers, Max Porter, wanted to show Jesse something. A lot of artists in game development have off-brand side projects that they work on for fun so that the tedium of work doesn't rob them of their love for art. What Max Porter showed Jesse Snyder was one of these side projects, a science fiction ray weapon. The model looked ripped right out of a classic sci-fi serial, sporting a sexy red coat of paint, and since many employees were contributing to Nazi zombies in any way they could, Max felt that his ray gun would be a perfect fit. Max was a guy who didn't like to brag or draw attention to himself too often, so this act of kindness from him was something really special. In order for the ray gun to come to life, though, it needed animations, audio, and visual effects. Audio director Brian Tuey agreed to make some sounds for it, Barry Whitney cleaned up some of the effects that Jesse did for the ray gun, and Jimmy Zielinski said he'd create some animations for it. This collaborative effort under the stress of the resentful higher-ups is what led to one of the most iconic weapons, arguably, in Call of Duty, the ray gun. To understand the ray gun's role in the mode, you need to understand the original idea for Nazi Zombies. The goal was to make the player feel trapped. Your play space was small, and when peeking out the window, shadowy zombies would be seen coming out of the mist and marching up towards your play space. This instantly put the players in a defensive mindset, and thus the core gameplay loop forms itself. Keep the zombies out, or they'll kill us. Zombies would come in waves that were signaled by an ominous music cue, and each wave would feature more and faster zombies than the previous wave. Jesse and co. worked hard to nail the balance so that the player felt in control for the first ten waves, but after that, the players begin to struggle, with wave 20 and onwards being the point where a simple mistake could cause a zombie breach that wouldn't be stopped. One of the keys to surviving into the round 20s lay in the ray gun's hands. It's a high damage, explosive ray pistol that can repel most zombie attacks. Due to its explosive nature, it can't shoot through zombies, so shooting at a zombie's feet is the best way to weaponize the splash damage. As new maps were added to the game, the play spaces became larger and the mode became less defensive, which is also where the ray gun began to make way for more powerful weaponry. The ray gun truly shines in the maps Nocturne and Toten and Verrucht, while in Shinonuma and Duris, it was something you didn't need to survive but it was still appreciated. The ray gun of World at War came in two forms, its standard form, and on the final map, Deris, its upgraded form, the Porter's Times 2 ray gun, which was named after the Treyarch employee who modeled it. Jesse would leave Treyarch shortly after getting Verrucht off the ground, making sure to also leave the ray gun as an easter egg in a campaign mission he worked on as his signature on the game as the father of the beloved mode. The development of COD's Zombies mode is a story that's unfortunately been cleaned up in the last decade. Marketing tours for games like Black Ops 3 and 4 would have you believe that it was just this fun, quirky little project that employees would work on during lunch, with higher-ups worried, but ultimately supportive. It wasn't a fun little side project. 
It took hard work, all-nighters, and back-to-back -back months with no weekends off, all while having no official studio support and in some cases outright hostility from the higher-ups, who later claimed ownership of the mode when it was a smash hit. What brought Nazi zombies to life was the hard work and refusal to let a good idea die from employees like Jesse Snyder, Mike Denny, and Jimmy Zielinski that got Nazi zombies over the finish line, and what made Max Porter's ray gun video game history. This is where it all started. In 2010, Treyarch's next Call of Duty game, Call of Duty Black Ops, hit store shelves. It took place in the 1960s as players found themselves in the midst of the Cold War. The Zombies mode also made a return, this time fully realizing a new direction. World at War began as a defensive horde mode, but here in Black Ops, gameplay changes, tweaks to how maps were designed, and more led to Zombies becoming a movement-heavy, action-focused horde mode. While a few weapons were brought back, such as the MP40, one of the weapons to survive the jump to the 1960s was the iconic Ray Gun. In this new game, it's a one-to-one -one port of the World at War Ray Gun into the Black Ops engine. It features the exact same animation set, which can cause it to stand out just a bit compared to the higher quality movement animations of Black Ops, if you're that kind of person who notices details. It also completely lacks a dolphin dive animation, which is funny. Those are minor nitpicks, however, because the transition to the new engine was a good one. In Black Ops, the Ray Gun is as reliable as ever being able to keep the player safe well into the round 20s and even 30s. It also prevents gas crawlers from exploding upon death and becomes even more valuable when combined with a perk drink that negates explosive damage, meaning the player can simply fire at their feet whenever they get surrounded. The color of its sights will even change from time to time when you pick it up from the box. Due to the easier gameplay of Black Ops Zombies when compared to World at War, a good player would be easily able to outlive the Raygun's usefulness in the round 40s and above. This meant it was a weapon with a usefulness cap that was reached more often than in World at War. It should be said, though, that the Black Ops 1 Zombies community recently had a bit of a ray gun renaissance when a player by the name of Strat developed a macro that lets the player rapidly fire the ray gun, turning it into something monstrously destructive. It's a valuable tool now for the high round community and remains an excellent box pull for those who just want to unwind with some friends. <laughs> With Black Ops 2, the ray gun made a return, this time featuring all new textures, materials, and thankfully, animations. The timeless reload animations Zelensky created were kept, but the sprinting, walking, diving, and even aiming down the sights animations were all remade to bring the ray gun's presentation in line with the animation style that the rest of the game had. Curiously, the ray gun's iron sights were changed, but beyond that, nothing really noteworthy to report. It remains as faithful as ever, but it should be noted that it's around this time when the ray gun began to see a bit of a dip in popularity. In Black Ops 2, the double tap perk drink was modified to let players fire two bullets at once from all ballistic weapons. This meant players were dishing out more damage than before, and this perk drink didn't work on the ray gun. When combined with the introduction of new, more powerful wonder weapons and upgrades, players were staying alive for longer than ever with different weapons of their choosing. The ray gun was a fantastic pull from the box for those not great at the mode, but for veterans, the easier gameplay loop meant the ray gun wasn't necessary, and often it actually just hindered their ability to get points from kills. The ray gun wasn't shining quite as bright as it used to, but it all changed when Treyarch announced the Vengeance map pack, which was set to bring players the zombies map buried, and a new incarnation of the ray gun the Ray Gun Mark II. The Ray Gun Mark II was accidentally added to the game early in a patch just before the DLC dropped. This sent the zombies community into a frenzy, frantically loading up the survival map town and spinning the box in the hope of using the weapon early. Treyarch caught fixed this very quickly and made the community wait. But boy, the wait was worth it. The Ray Gun Mark II is the complete opposite of its explosive older sister. It's a long-range, burst-energy weapon with the ability to penetrate through zombie hordes, letting the player clear up to 20 zombies with just a burst or two. The frame of the weapon is an excellent spin on the classic ray gun, cleanly building off that iconic frame and coloration to craft something new that still looks like it belongs in the same technology tree. And with a great reload animation to boot, 
I can't stress enough how great the Raygun Mark II is. It's charismatic and likable as a weapon, but there are some nitpicks. Mainly, a bizarre oversight from Treyarch. In first person, it's held with two hands, kind of like a submachine gun. But in third person, this long weapon is held more like a pistol. It's a funny oversight, but it's very easy to overlook. The Raygun Mark II's introduction to the game also came with a new look and color scheme for the classic Raygun, which it would adopt on the zombies' maps Buried and Origins, now being red and green as opposed to red and blue. It's also around this time when Treyarch updated the game's secret upgrade system with a new ability for low-ranking players. If you keep buying Olympia ammo off the wall at low rounds, the game will just give you a free ray gun. As the maps grew more complex, the perks more powerful, and the players more lethal, the importance of the ray gun began to diminish. It's about now that the ray gun began to enter a bit of a wilderness period, struggling to find a place for itself as the zombie mode evolved and changed. But for right now, it was holding on. What are your thoughts on the ray gun of Black Ops 2? Do you prefer the blue or green colors? Black Ops 3 was the first Call of Duty game from Treyarch on the then next generation consoles, the Xbox One and PS4. It came with an updated version of their Black Ops 2 engine, supporting more advanced rendering techniques and fidelity. Its graphics and rendering techniques weren't nearly as advanced as the previous year's Call of Duty, but it didn't keep Black Ops 3 from looking pretty in its own right. Speaking of pretty, the ray gun made a return in the new Zombies mode with a new model and updated animations that have the operator reloading its batteries one at a time. I do have to say that the new animation set is just a tad sloppier looking and not quite as smooth, but eh, nobody cares. It gets the job done. But how does it perform? It's here where the seeds planted by Black Ops 2 unfortunately began to bear fruit. Black Ops 3, at the time of its release, was the easiest of the Zombies modes, giving players a lot of control over the maps before launching into a game through its weapon kit system and game-breaking gobblegum system. Once in match, the new double pack-a-punch system also meant that players could turn whatever weapon they desired into something that could insta-kill zombies indefinitely. The ray gun of Black Ops 3 was a small fish in a big pond of powerful weapons and microtransaction-infused abilities. When combined with the already futuristic and science fiction aesthetic of Black Ops 3's weapon arsenal and locations, there was very little to make the ray gun stand out. Back in World at War, the reason Jesse Snyder was so excited about Max Porter's ray gun was that they needed something that looked out of place in the gloomy battlefields of World War II. Here in Black Ops 3, the ray gun felt a bit left out in the cold. This was made worse by a rather strange oversight by Treyarch. Whether it's a bug or an error in how they designed its animations, they seemingly forgot to give it walking animations, which means the Black Ops 3 ray gun is always frozen on the screen, animationless when moving. This was a low point for the ray gun of Call of Duty, but all was not lost, thankfully, because its younger brother was added to Black Ops 3 in the acclaimed Zombie Chronicles DLC, a map containing HD remakes of past zombie maps and experiences. The ray gun Mark II of Black Ops 3 is an excellent little love letter to the original featuring higher quality textures, modeling, and even new details in its animations, such as the way energy can be seen arcing between the spines on the back of the weapon when you fire. Amusingly, Treyarch didn't fix the third-person pistol stance for it, but given the fact they forgot to give the ray gun a walk animation, I think it's forgivable here with the Mark II. The DLC map Gorod Krovi even saw a Russian-made successor to the ray gun, the ray gun Mark III. It's held in the player's right hand, while the left hand holds what was called the GKZ-45. Together, these two are an attempt by the Soviet Union to improve upon the Axis powers' ray gun models. It features a heavy, atomic sci-fi art style and the star of the USSR. It's a fantastic weapon with the ability to fling energy mines from the left hand while the right hand can be used to collapse that mine into a black hole. The ray gun of Black Ops 3 was a bit of a punching bag for YouTubers at the time, given a bad rap by the echo chambers that can form in various communities. But everyone has their own opinions. I'd be curious to hear yours.
The story of Black Ops 4 is a hard one to read about. Its development was quite scrambled and disorganized, which led to a lot of last-minute crunch, burnout, and compromising in its gameplay direction. The game we got was ultimately successful, but it's regarded as one of Treyarch's messier titles by the Call of Duty community. Speaking of sadly being messy, let's talk about the Black Ops 4 Raygun. Off the bat, the ray gun of Black Ops 4 is a noticeable upgrade over Black Ops 3. Not only did Treyarch remember to give it a walking animation this time, the animations themselves have been redone. Much of the jank and sloppiness was thrown out, and the new animations give the ray gun a sense of weight in the player's hands. It's powerful too, and with the new health model for the zombies keeping it somewhat relevant into the high rounds, it's actually exciting to pull one out of the box. But. There's an issue in the form of the specialist weapons. In Black Ops 4 Zombies, all players have access to pocket wonder weapons that regenerate their energy over time after use. Players also customize the perks they can have access to prior to playing maps as well as the attachments of all guns available. Players are more powerful than before, therefore zombies have to be more aggressive than before. And there's this power escalation, so that means that weapons such as the ray gun, if they can't kill nearly as fast as your unlimited ammo specialist weapons, they're going to be left in the dust. And that's unfortunately what happened to the Black Ops 4 ray gun. This was, on paper, a great incarnation of the weapon, but its potential was hard to realize in the game flow of Black Ops 4, really only being able to shine in the game's blackout battle royale mode when found by players. It can also be found in the game's rather underwhelming HQ missions when the recon class is given one to defend against a horde of zombies. Interestingly, this ray gun is missing certain particle effects and it lacks its full ammo capabilities. The core gameplay loop of Black Ops 4 gave the ray gun a hard time, but it's not all bad, because in something that's becoming a bit of a pattern, its younger brother got quite a lot of love. On the map Alpha Omega, a variety of ray gun Mark II variants can be crafted by players, each one themed around a specific element. They take quite a bit of checklisting to get done, but once acquired, they're a lot of fun to mess around with. And want to know the best part? Treyarch remembered to fix the third-person animations. Black Ops 4 may be the weakest Treyarch title in their development history, but it did its best to give the Raygun a bit more of a presence. As per usual, though, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Outside of an appearance in Call of Duty Mobile's Zombies mode, the ray gun was mostly dormant until 2020, when the next Treyarch Call of Duty game, Black Ops Cold War, released. Following the reception to Black Ops 4, the Zombies mode of Cold War made a conscious choice to focus more on accessibility and streamlining. It was a bit of a rebirth for the mode. Gone was the overly complicated Doctor Who-style plot that characterized much of Black Ops 3 and 4, and in was something a bit more grounded and understandable in comparison. The mechanics also saw redesigns to put heavier focus back on killing zombies and surviving waves of the undead. Prior to release, the developers talked quite a bit about the Raygun's importance to zombies and their desire to return it to its glory days. Treyarch had a lot of talk, and their confidence paid off when players got their hands on this new, next-gen ray gun. The ray gun of Black Ops Cold War received quite an upgrade with snappier animations and screen shake, much better materials, and a stronger damage model and speed to its projectiles. It's one of the strongest weapons of the game and a must-have for high round runs. In order to give it a sense of importance again, Treyarch made it much harder to pull from the box, and thanks to the historical setting, it stands out against the historic ballistic weapons of the Cold War for the first time time in years, possibly a decade, the ray gun was properly back. It was a celebrated return, and many fans regard it as one of the best iterations of the ray gun. In Treyarch fashion, there is a mistake made in the ray gun's animations, this time with the inspect animation. Due to a bug, the playback animation speed is doubled, making it appear fast-forwarded. The ammo battery can also be seen poking out of the gun. Look, that's it right there. Kind of a bizarre oversight, but that's really only a nitpick. The Raygun of Black Ops Cold War is an honorable veneration of the series' most iconic weapon. 
It's one that fit perfectly within the new gameplay rhythms of the mode, and a lot of care clearly went into reigniting a flame that some in the zombies community were worried went out. It can be found in the mystery box on all maps except Firebase Z, it can be obtained via an easter egg on D Machine, and in the game's outbreak mode, it can sometimes be looted from chests or picked up off the body of a rare zombie that can be found wandering around, named Ronald Raygun. Call of Duty Vanguard is the latest entry from Sledgehammer Games, made on a very short development cycle and in the 2019 Modern Warfare game engine. The game attempts to combine the tactical operator vibe of Modern Warfare with the pulp action of World War II adventure stories to mixed results. But Treyarch was brought into the game's development cycle when they lent a hand in crafting Vanguard's Zombies mode. Vanguard Zombies changed the iconic wave-based formula quite a bit, reimagining Zombies as an objective attack mode with portals that brought players to mini-games they could complete. This new direction for the Zombies mode was largely rejected by the vocal Zombies community for how far it deviated from the mode's roots. And without a way to just play classic survival, the anger only got worse. There was a complete lack of ray gun and other things such as pack-a-punch camos, easter eggs, and a bundle of other omissions, and it gave off the vibe that the mode was poorly conceived and just rushed out the door. To the developer's credit, the ray gun was eventually added, but only after months of waiting. For the tired and bored zombies community, this ray gun return was met rather coldly and without much fanfare. It was too little too late, and the mode never really recovered, unfortunately. You'd be surprised then to learn that the ray gun of Vanguard Zombies isn't bad at all. In fact, it's one of the best weapons in the mode, being a must-have for those trying to complete objectives on higher world ranks. Thanks to Vanguard running on the more technically advanced Modern Warfare game engine, the ray gun itself positively pops with excellent material work and animations. The inspect playback speed was even fixed. See? Doesn't look fast-forwarded anymore. In traditional Raygun fashion, though, there are a couple of mistakes. The battery on the inspect animation is still sticking out of the gun. It's right there. Come on, guys. That's not invisible. We can see that. Okay, nitpicks over. Due to all Call of Duty developers now being shifted over to the Modern Warfare game engine, Treyarch's next game will no doubt be a technical upgrade. The Vanguard version of the Raygun is a peek into how a Raygun might feel in Treyarch's next Call of Duty game. It wasn't enough to redeem the Vanguard Zombies mode for Legacy Zombies players, but for those who do enjoy Vanguard Zombies, it's a welcome inclusion. But what do you think of it? The ray gun is such a standout weapon for the Call of Duty series. It began life as a simple art project and took on a greater level of importance to the brand when the zombies mode was a critical hit. We all have our favorite version of the ray gun, and we all have that memory when we first got it from the box, hearing our friends excitedly yell. And what would you like the next evolution video to be on? Feel free to share the video around, and a special thank you to the channel members for keeping late night gaming afloat, and a big thank you to folks from the zombies community such as Jay Rizzo. All of you guys are awesome. And for the rest of you... Okay, quick edit. I was gonna try the Nazi zombies bye-bye laugh, but it just sounded awful, so I don't know, man. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day.